My view on video games gets so many comments and so many guys asking me why I'm so aggressive and hostile towards it. And that's where I take the like the mock, the mick out of people who say this. Oh, I, I only play for one hour at the end of you know a hard day of work. And so many people have tried to figure out the reason why I'm so against video games. And a bunch of them have said, oh, but he's he's just projecting because you know Hamza wasted a lot of his life on video games. Well, yeah, that's exactly why I tell it to you. You've got to understand the, the way that you give advice to someone, the way that I can transfer my wisdom to you is if I've made mistakes and I've wasted time. I feel nothing but disappointment in the young men that I see who waste time in the virtual world instead of real life because there is no excuses anymore. You have in front of you the accounts of hundreds if not thousands of men who are slightly older than you who have told you that their lives got significantly better when they stopped playing video games. So it's disappointing to see so many guys who are on self-improvement but who have this idea like, oh, but it's not so bad. Yeah, like, it, it's not horrible. Congratulations. It's not like heroin or something. Fine. But is it good for you? No. Absolutely not. You can bring up this fucking bullshit research of like, oh, but it helps you with your hand-eye coordination and your memory and just shut up. Are you using that hand-eye coordination in the rest of your life? Of course not. You can make some like wishy-washy theory that, oh, but if you play it, then maybe if you play sports, it might help or just go play sports. Go practice for the thing that you need the hand-eye coordination or the memory for in the first place. Then you can say with the, oh, but the socialization aspect, but I guarantee that the people you're socializing with are fucking losers. I guarantee that not only that, you're also not getting into deep conversations with them when you're playing those games. You're just talking about the game. You want to have that socialization aspect? Why don't you invite those same people to come meet you and go do something once a month, once every three months? Why don't you do a meetup together? And this idea that, okay, you well, what if you just play one hour a day? It's not so bad, is it? The truth is, I hate this. I hate this excuse. And it is just simply an excuse because it's the shit that I used to say. That's why it pisses me off. That's why like, I have this attitude that like I fucking despise you if you play video games. Because I see my younger self in you who made all these poor decisions. And yes, like you know, I'm grateful for where I am right now and I wouldn't be here if he didn't make those decisions. But you have to take the wisdom and the learning lessons from someone that you relate to. If you're watching my videos, you somewhat relate to me. This idea that, oh, but what if you just play one hour a day? You know, there's always the same comment that they say, but, you know, I meditate, I exercise, but I just play one hour a day. It's not even bad, Hamza. You're like, you're blowing it, or like, you're over-exaggerating how worse it is. The fact that you need to write an excuse like that, the fact that you need to say, oh, but look at me, I, I'm really good in the rest of my life, so it's not that bad, is it, guys? Shows that you already know that it's an inherently a bad habit. And it's not one hour. Stop lying. Now, if you're watching this and you're someone who doesn't play video games and you know, you've taken a step away from it, you know for a fact that those motherfuckers who say that they play for an hour, they are totally bullshitting. You play for an hour a day if you're 13 years old and your parents control how much you can play. 100% I agree with you. If you're 13 and your parents are telling you you can only play one hour of RuneScape, then you'll be playing one hour because your parents are keeping you accountable to that. But the truth is, most people watching this, most people who say this one hour of video game bullshit, they're 16, 18, 20. Some guys are in there like fucking mid 20s still playing video games. You're not playing one hour. You haven't set like a fucking timer to play one hour. You're saying that it's an hour when the actual thing is that you're playing for at least, at least one and a half, if not two, if not three hours. Every single time you log on, every single time you're in like a gaming mood, you play for multiple hours. But then it also takes over your mind for the rest of the day. You're subscribed to like these fucking like... You know, like pages where they talk about video games and maybe social media pages and subreddits and Twitter pages and you watch those videos on YouTube. So it's more like three hours, let's say on average, every single day. The same guys say that they don't have time to educate themselves, to read. Like, and like they say that they don't have time. The truth is they can't even read. You want to become successful, just start reading. As long as you have like a hint of that level of the ability to take action, you'll become successful if you read as much as I do, as much as like Iman Gadzi, bro. The, everyone's success story in the modern day, it's always the same thing. Like you, you've seen the same dynamic so many times. Young man is a loser, stops playing video games, stops being a loser, reaches the success that he wanted all along. 
you've seen the same story being told on like every single body transformation you video on YouTube, which is that I used to play video games all day and girls didn't hold eye contact with me, but then I stopped playing video games and started lifting weights and now girls hold eye contact with me. And you can make all these bullshit, oh, but Hamza X plays video games, Elon Musk plays video games, Michael Jackson plays, I don't give a fuck what they do. You are not them. If you've reached this immense level of success, then okay, congratulations. But you haven't. You are in the growth stage of your life. You have to understand that every hour that you have right now is extremely valuable. The decisions you make right now are so much more significant than that singular decision that you make. Because you make that one decision to play video games today instead of reading a book. Please believe me, I want you to visualize this right now. I want you to visualize like your life split, like your mind split in half in what you can see if you close your eyes. On the right side, you're making the decision to play video games for an hour and on the left to read a book. Please believe me, even though you somewhat think that this decision is insignificant, please believe me, it's, it's so much more significant than you think. Because it's not just one hour. The truth is that one hour of reading isn't going to do anything. One hour of exercise isn't going to do anything. And so you may as well just fucking play the video games for this one hour. But it goes deeper than that. Because what you choose in this decision to do in this hour, you are more likely to choose tomorrow and the day after and the day after. You're more likely to start thinking about it and visualizing success in that area. This is a compound effect. For anyone who's watching this video who gave up video games years ago, you get that same feeling and you know, we should, we should stay humble and have humility, but you do get that same feeling of pride. We're not supposed to like admit it, but you know, like you feel so much better than the guys who you used to play video games with who still play video games. Because this isn't a one hour a day thing. This is for a lifetime. The truth is that you don't really get to do that much in this life. The idea of essentialism, that you only have like a limited mental capacity to excel in just a couple of areas is so true. And to have one of those areas as video games is disgraceful. Now the excuse comes, but what if you make money? But the truth is the majority of people are not making money. And at that point, you are like, you need to have some fucking respect for those esports guys. Those, like, I wouldn't say that they're athletes, but they're, they're like, you know, virtual reality athletes. The thing is, they are playing video games. They're working. The, the amount of young men who have been lost, they've lost so many, so much of their life with this idea that, oh, but I'll become an esports player. Fuck you. You play video games. There's a difference. They're working. They work 12 to 16 hours a day and they like meticulously improve their skills. You are not doing that. You're playing video games with your fucking Spurgy friends whilst eating snacks. You're not the same. At that point, if you truly ask those guys, a lot of them are, don't even enjoy the game that they, that they work on. A lot of them do more training in the game than actually playing it. I don't, like, I'm not so much in that space, but I can almost visualize some, like, famous player who's, like, really, really good. He spends so many countless hours actually training behind the scenes, and then you see him actually compete and play the game. I can imagine on League of Legends, like, he loads up, like, a bot game by himself, and literally just practices fucking, um, last hitting. If you are truly, true, if that's, like, your, your, you know, your purpose, you, like, if you are thinking to yourself, yes, my purpose is to entertain, and I'm going to be, a, like, a fantastic esports player, and I'm going to be, like, the, the, the guy who's entertaining people on Twitch and stuff, fair enough, but I, I'm on your side here. Just take some time to be somewhat realistic. Be, be reasonably unreasonable. I've done reasonably unreasonable things in my life, too, and so if someone's told me, but Hamza, you know, so many people are going to be YouTubers, then, of course, that would, like you know, like, I made it. And so chances are, like, there is there is a chance that someone watching this could become an esports player, but you need to be truthful right now. Are you working or are you playing? Be completely truthful. This is only for, like, this... I know that guys, when we talk about quitting video games, a lot of guys get, like, insecure and hostile. You've got to remember, like, we're all on... We're all on the same side. We're all on the same team here. We all just want to see young men grow. It's so important that you take some time to have some humility and actually think to yourself, are you going to make it? Are you working on this game? 
are you like a fantastic player and you're going to get excel like you're not playing for enjoyment you're not even playing games anymore you're working on one particular game every day for eight to twelve hours if you're playing for fun if you're playing for enjoyment you're not in the category of someone who's going to be an esports player You have to take this seriously. So many young guys in this discussion of video games, they get so hostile when someone tells them to quit. Like the amount of comments I see when I mention video games and people are like, oh, what the fuck's wrong with video games, Hamza? Like, but you, but Hamza, you, you, you sleep with girls. You, you go on Tinder for an hour. That's like, but I admit to you my mistakes. I admit to you that those are like addictions that, I, that I'm trying to reduce. There's a difference. I waste time, of course I do. I'm, an, I'm a human being, I'm not perfect. I waste time. A couple of weeks ago, I had a nine hour phone uh, screen time. I can give you the excuse, you know, my entire family were arguing and I couldn't sleep and I was you know, feeling really anxious and shit. So I really just fucking scrolled on Instagram and called people on WhatsApp, yeah. But I still wasted time. But I am here with authenticity, being honest and telling you like, I'm not proud of it and that like, it's not a good thing and I aim to reduce shit like that. The difference between that and the guys who are really, really on video games is that they're like, they're coping and they try and give this excuse like, no, it is actually good for them. If you play video games, the same as taking drugs, the same as eating junk food, hold your hand up and just say, yeah, I'm being a Jeffrey for a little bit. I want to be a Jeffrey for a little bit. And at that point, it's like, bro, you're immune. I can't even say anything to you. If you say like, yep, I'm, I'm a Jeffrey because I play video games, I'll be like, like, well, yeah, fair enough. He's he's on a self improvement journey. I hope he'll probably like make more progress as he goes along. The main hate that I have is for the people who act like it's a productive habit. That it saddens me so much when I see young men talk about it as if it's like productive and video games are good for you because you know three reasons why video games are good for you because it helps with your memory. Fuck you. No, it does not. That overstimulation is fucking destroying your brain, and that's why you can't even read a couple of sentences without your mind wandering. But it teaches you concepts and you know all this like artistic inspiration. Shut the fuck up, bro. This, it's it's one. It's kind of like no fap, honestly. It really is on. I I think, I think it's on level. I think watching porn, like I've said this before, watching porn and watching sports. But watching porn and playing video games, they're not that different from each other. They really aren't. And someone's gonna quote all this fucking scientific research, but of course I'm being a bro scientist. It's really not. You're just living in the virtual world. You're convincing your brain that you're actually doing something important. Every video gamer that I come across has this like weird spurgy personality where it's like their entire life is so fucked up that they don't even realize how bad it is because they're surrounded by other video gamers. When you're a normal person, like a healthy person who doesn't play video games and you come across a guy who you know, plays video games, it, it, like, it blows your mind to think like, wait, people live like this? Like you're a normal, like somewhat healthy guy. You stay awake till 3 a.m. playing video games. Why? You eat a thousand, two thousand calories of dirty fucking sugary snacks whilst you mindlessly play? Why? You played for six hours straight and like, honestly, a six hour gaming session isn't like a big one. It really isn't. You play for that long? Why? If you've achieved everything that you've wanted in life, if you've achieved a mass amount of success and you're already financially free and like you're so damn happy and you've, you know, you've been meditating and getting therapy for years and like you're at the ultimate point, like, yeah, like at that point you can like, you can do whatever you want, but you're not there yet. And this isn't me saying, oh, but don't have fun up until you, you, you know, reach a point of success. The idea is that we want self-improvement. We want to be productive and we want to make that fun. The productive habits can only be fun if you're not doing any kind of hyper stimulation activity. That's so important. The productive habits that we want to get onto can only be fun. They can only be enjoyable if you aren't hyper stimulating your brain with something else. This is why those guys who watch porn don't really find much enjoyment in the rest of their lives. The same with video games. This is why the kids who play video games. Why, why the fuck would you read a book if you're someone who actively plays video games? Now someone's gonna comment and like, you know, everyone's got their own anecdote, but Hamza, I read and I play video, shut the fuck up. 
It's a disgrace to waste your youth. These are not the best moments in your life. Like they, they are for most guys. They don't have to be. You know how life isn't like that amazing and you're kind of like young and you don't get the girls that you want and you don't have like the life that you want and your parents kind of bully you and you, you're not so confident, you're not so happy, but you know, you, you might get that fucking new level or the new sword and runescape or some bullshit. Your life will go better and better and better significantly the more you take a step back from these hyper-stimulant activities. You totally, the thing is, okay, 100% of the people watching this totally agree with what I just said when it comes to porn. 100% of the people watching this, the majority of young men know now that, like, the majority of young men in, like, our kind of internet space, obviously not the fucking normies. We know that porn is bad for you. Like, everyone in self-improvement knows about NoFap, and uh, even if you're struggling with it, or even if you're somewhat, like, not on it, you still kind of know that porn is bad for you. You still know that taking a step from back from porn is pretty much only going to have positive impacts on you. People disagree with video games. All of those benefits that someone can bring up are so, so minuscule compared to the detriment that will happen in your life. And a final excuse and argument that, that gamers bring up is that, oh, but you know, they've worked hard and it's just one hour to unwind and rest before the end of the day. That is not how you rest. And worst of all, that ruins your ability to rest. Because I want you to picture the life of a fucking Spurgy gamer who goes to work, goes to school, comes back. He plays for three hours, but he plays for one hour. He promises you he plays for one hour, but he plays for like three to four hours. It's late. It's 10 p.m. or something. And he already knows he can't sleep at this. This is why all video gamers have this fucked up sleeping pattern where they go to sleep like 1 a.m. Like something ridiculous. Midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. If you're not in bed by like 10, 10 p.m., unless you have like work, you know, night shift or some shit. If you're not in bed at like 10 p.m., bro, you're fucking weird. 10, 11, max. When you stay, like, I don't want to sound like a fucking mother, but like when you stay on your computer, you don't even bother putting on that, like the blue light filter. Playing fucking video games, your brain's active as fuck. You're looking out for the enemy. You're speaking to your friends and you're shit talking onto them. You know that you're not going to sleep straight away. So this idea that, oh, but it's just one hour to unbind. No, it's one hour wasted of hyperstimulation, but it keeps you up longer. You know, the amount that video gamers say, like, oh, it's one hour to rest and unwind. Like, I, I know that you need the rest and unwind because you're sleep deprived because you keep playing video games. And you know, the cure to sleep deprivation, you know, when you really, really want to rest and you really want to sleep, you know what you should do? Go to sleep. In my opinion, there is no true excuse, there is no true argument to be playing video games consistently. The one way that I can see it be having some kind of like, if you if you must be a crackhead, if you must hold your hand up and say that you're going to be a Jeffrey, the one way that I would personally recommend for the guys who are so, so onto it, is to do a large gaming session at most once per week. At the most. Do not play every single day. You organize it with your friends. Let them all know that you're going to be playing from Saturday 6 p.m. to midnight or some bullshit. And like that's still crackheady, of course it is. But the idea is then you're you're gonna like rinse it out. It's so much better then because it's not a habit, it's not a stacking on into every day. Your mind is nice and clear. You get to read and focus on like productive habits throughout the week. And then you have like a day where you're just then not even thinking about work for like the entire evening. And then this like maximizes your enjoyment because it gets to be like a big gaming session. You don't have this feeling of like restraining yourself to like, you know, just one hour a day. That's the only way that I could somewhat say to a video gamer is that like, that's the only way that you should play. Best case scenario, you close that shit off and you just don't open it again. I'm almost two years clean of, of video games. I have to speak like it's like a fucking drug because it truly is. People got criticized me because I said, because I said it with like video games that are a drug. Yes, they fucking are. Of course they are. Do you build up a tolerance so that you need to play more video games to get a se sense of satisfaction? Yes. Anyone who disagrees is a fucking liar. When we first used to play video games, when we were children and when we were like early teenagers, we could play for literally fucking 20 minutes, one hour, and we'd be satisfied. The longer and longer that you've been a video gamer, you have to play now for multiple hours to get any level of enjoyment. Even then, the amount of people who, who even think that video games are enjoyable just baffles my mind. Grab your phone. If you are so certain that I am wrong and you're right and your video games are so fun and they're so good for you, do this one practice and prove me wrong. Grab your phone, don't fake this. Grab your phone, set the camera on, position it to you and play video games and forget that it's recording, don't fake it. See how many times you actually sit there and smile and laugh because I guarantee that you're gonna spend the next four hours, even though you said it was one hour, you're gonna spend the next couple of hours mouth breathing, just 
Yeah, he's behind the corner. Yeah. Oh, we got him. Just fucking mouth breathing. Smiling like two times over the next couple of hours. And the only times that you're going to laugh, truly the only times that you're going to laugh whilst you're playing video games, is that your friend makes you laugh. And what you really wanted through all of this was social connection. And now you can choose to continuously keep getting the social connection from your low value little Jeffrey friends who want you to, who will only speak to you if you're playing video games, which should be a fucking red flag. Or you can start to improve yourself and actually become a man of character, be, improve your mental health, be mindful and grateful, improve your social skills. And you start to make good quality friends who will not want you to play video games because they'll want to be sat in front of you talking whilst you guys are doing something healthy together. That is the life that we want to build. But the truth is that the people who are in this area of life, like those good quality people who go on hikes and who like, you know, go to the gym every day and they're, they're so mindful and present and they would be such amazing friends. The truth is these guys don't want to be friends with video gamers. They, they, these are, these are nice people. So they'll kind of say like, oh, you know, I don't really mind someone can play video games. But the truth is they wouldn't even be around a little spurgy guy who stayed up to like 3 a.m. and he's sleep deprived. Imagine the, the personality of a video gamer. They wouldn't even cross paths. I fucking hate video games, bro. And people say it to me, oh, but you're bringing up your past trauma and you know, like video games was like different for you and stuff. But of course I am. Of course I'm going to give you the advice that I have from my experiences. You should be taking that more on board because I'm not speaking of ignorance. I'm not a guy who's like never been on video games. I've been truly on them. I've, I've got thousands of hours on the main games that I used to play. And you can hear not just from me, but from so many young men who have taken a step back, who literally said like, it's only been positive in my life. I don't realize why I spent so much time on it. I don't realize why my studies suffered through all of high school, through all of college and university. I literally just played fucking video games. And it's always that same thought when you get to, like when you talk to guys in my position, we just think, what if I just put that time, even a fifth of that time into something productive? into making a business or learning a skill or even playing just sports. You want a sense of like social connection and you want a sense of competition and achievement. Just go play sports in real life, man. It's not the same thing. It's sad because the guys who need, like the, the truth is I'm speaking to the camera right now and I'm imagining that I'm speaking to a video gamer. The truth is that the overwhelming majority of them clicked off this video like a minute in because it it hurts to have your views challenged i think the only people who are truly watching maybe you can comment and let me know but i think the only people who are watching are the guys who totally agree with me and it's like you quit playing video games and like me and you are on this path thinking okay how can we help these fucking jeffries to to truly believe us that tr quitting video games is going to be such a fantastic choice for them those guys they're such down in the depths of that addiction that like they're so What's the word? They're so defensive about it that you can't even get to them. The moment that you criticize video games, the moment that you you, t you speak to them in an attitude saying like, you're better than this. We're like, we're on their side. And they'll drop out of the conversation. They'll tune out. They'll comment and say some bullshit like, oh, you're wrong about video games, Hamza, because X. Do you know, I'll, I'll make a separate video on this, but it's really making me think like, just just don't do anything stupid don't just don't get addicted to any kind of instant gratification and you're on top of fucking 80 percent of people really that's like most of self-improvement straight away is done if you're just not addicted to porn video games or drugs or social media that's it like pretty much just don't be addicted to those things just give up those fucking vices and nothing is really stopping you now You've got a clean slate to build upon everything. The guys who struggle with, with self-improvement, it's always because they're addicted to one of those things. It's always, always because they're addicted to porn, video games, social media, or some kind of drugs or sugary food and shit. That's it. Because if you don't have that like negative thing pulling you down, then all you can do with like your nice positive habits is just build yourself up. These guys, like they don't even know what they're missing out on. It really saddens me. But I also feel like I need to take more responsibility because as I'm saying all this, especially in the last couple of minutes, I'm also thinking that per, like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of upset because they're not taking the advice, but like that isn't their responsibility. A leader has to really think if his advice and his 
the plan hasn't worked. It's the leader's responsibility. So it's making me think that perhaps the way that I've been given advice, yeah, I've been, I definitely have been speaking too hostile and I bring too much aggression to this argument because I'm kind of speaking to younger Hamza, but it's making me think what is the right way? If anyone has like an idea, what is the right way to get a young man off video games, his addiction? It's probably through love and gratitude. I think about that. It's making me think of like creating like some kind of like framework or plan or or, you know, I used to do those long videos on the main channel, like a full, like, one-hour guide on, like, quitting video games, a full step-by-step -step process for all these fucking Jeffreys. Yeah. <laughs> do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it.